Frank Caruso, producer of Oregon Life. In this episode, I got to sit down with Kelly Petrie and learn some things about mindfulness and how she teaches it to adults and, and children. And as I've always said, when you're helping children, you're making the world a better place. And Kelly's doing just that. Enjoy this episode. Welcome. It's so great to have you here to learn a little bit about mindfulness. My name is Kelly Petrie, and I'm the founder of the Maitri Center for Mindful Living in downtown Oregon. And I have been a contemplative educator in the community for the past decade, offering classes and workshops and private sessions for people of all ages, abilities, and identities. Um, one of the common questions that I get is, what does it mean to be a contemplative educator? What it means to me is that I am offering a holistic approach to teaching and learning that integrates um, elements of awareness, compassion, and insight. And this is really what the foundation of mindfulness education is, and I'm a mindfulness educator. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is a way of paying attention to ourselves, to others, to the world around us, um, and just really being present in our lives. And we call this embodied presence. And embodied presence is a more um, complete expression of mindfulness, you could say, so that we can really access not only our cognitive and intellectual wisdom, but also our sensory and emotional wisdom. And that allows us to be less reactive and more skillfully responsive to the circumstances of our lives. So mindfulness is really for everybody. It doesn't matter what age or what your background is. Everyone, I think, can benefit from it because if you think about it, um, all people, all beings, you know, desire to be happy, to have uh, more peace and contentment in, in their lives. They want to have a little less struggle. And that's what mindfulness offers. It offers us an opportunity to navigate the ups and downs of life with a greater sense of ease and compassion. And I think that this is um, really relevant right now because these past couple of years have been really difficult with this pandemic and other types of issues that are happening in our world that are creating a lot of strife. Um, so I think that we could all benefit from this. Um, one of the cool things I think about my work in the world is that I get to create and explore um, a wide range of opportunities to bring mindfulness um, to different people. And one of the really cool experiences that I had in the spring of 2019 was sharing mindfulness um, with a private school in Concepcion, Chile. And this was part of a teach abroad program. And so I got to live with a really wonderful host family whose uh, teenage children were students at this school. Um, but I also got to be paired up with some of the teachers and staff. And one of the teachers was a teacher of philosophy, which is neat because the principles of philosophy and the principles of mindfulness really complement each other very well. Um, I also got to work with the pupil services staff uh, across all grade levels. And um, in their, this school, the pupil services staff, which here we would normally refer to as like our guidance counselors, but that's also their special ed department. So I got to teach and work with all of the populations that are really near and dear to my heart, which are the youth. 
um, teaching other teachers and working with people who might have learning differences or disabilities of some kind. Um, one of the really unique experiences too um, about this was that um, I don't speak Spanish. And so this school teaches uh, English as a second language, but that doesn't mean that all of the students are fluent in it or that all of the staff members are fluent in it. So there was a bit of a language barrier and I had to figure out how to convey this information about mindfulness um, when I couldn't communicate with them in their native language. Um, and so this was a very humbling experience for me, but it also taught me a lot about mindful communication. It taught me to slow down and pause and be more precise with my words. And it also came back to this idea of embodied presence and how important that is, our body language um, as a way of communicating underneath of language. Um, so with the teachers, I was able to create a workshop for them um, that really uh, was an introduction of mindfulness. Mindfulness isn't really very popular in Chile, so this was new for them. But, you know, just like our teachers here, they work very, very hard. Um, they have a lot of demands that are put on them, you know, and this, of course, was pre-pandemic. I think we're seeing that teachers experience a lot more stress due to the pandemic. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, teachers work very hard and they're important um, in the lives of children. And so if they can have some tools that allow them to cope with the demands that are placed on them, they may not be able to change them, but if they can cope with them in a wholesome way, that that can really uh, benefit their well-being and the way that they are able to make connections with their students. Um, so that was one thing that I was able to do while I was there. I also um, really loved teaching the teens, the, uh, what we would call our high schoolers, particularly the ones that are getting ready to graduate. Um, because just like our students here, they, um, you know, they're trying to get good grades, they're looking at colleges, they're trying to pass exams that are going to allow them to go to a good school and to fulfill their dreams. You know, they still have all of the uh, peer and friendship issues that come up in adolescence. And so what they really loved are two particular um, practices, mindfulness practices. And one of them was a body scan meditation, which is basically, you know, just bringing your attention to different parts of your body and just really feeling grounded and relaxed and present. Um, there at their school, their classrooms were very, very tiny. Um, they hardly had any room to move. Um, so of course, a body scan can be done in a seated chair, but we also took them to places where they could actually lay down and enjoy that sense of just coming home to themselves. Another practice that I taught them <clears throat> was something that I call a inner weather report. And this is something that's valuable for adults too. And so basically, an inner weather report is just checking in on how we're feeling inside our, you know, our physical body. You know, we're just, again, kind of scanning through and just noticing what is showing up right now. Am I feeling tension? Am I feeling hungry? Am I feeling thirsty? achy, you know, whatever it is, and just really noting what, what's, what's there right now. Um, we then look at the state of our mind. Is our mind swirling about like a tornado? Does it feel foggy? Does it feel um, bright and sunny, you know, alert and ready to learn? Um, maybe we're thinking a lot about something that happened earlier in the day or things we need to still do. And this, again, is really important information. Lastly, we check in with our emotions and our mood and our, you know, our inner feeling state and learning to identify how we're feeling, what emotions are here. Um, again, not to 
beat ourselves up or try to change what our experience is or judge ourselves, but really just so we know that when we're coming into the classroom or into the board meeting or sitting down at the dinner table, how, what is the lens from which we are interacting with other, with other people? And so um, the inner weather report, I think, is a, a nice tool uh, for all of us to check in with, especially when we're transitioning into an activity that we're about to do. Now, with the younger kids, things look a little bit different. Um, the younger kids, you know, are naturally active, they're naturally curious, they like to laugh and they like to play. And so teaching mindfulness to um, youth that are much younger, um, it's so important for it to be fun and engaging and meaningful to them. So we might read a storybook that has a theme of mindfulness or sing songs or do creative art projects, things like that. Um, but we also do games. And games is really where the practice is. So one of my favorite games that I play with kids is something that is called Pass the Cup. And basically what I do is I fill a cup all the way, almost all the way to the top with water. And we sit in a circle and we start to pass the cup around the circle with the goal that we're not going to spill any of that water. So the kids normally think, oh my gosh, there's no way we're going to be able to do this, right? Um, but it's pretty amazing that they are able to really gather their attention, slow themselves down, naturally become self-aware, aware of the people who are in the circle. And that first time that it goes around, they're all super surprised that they didn't spill the water. The next thing, once they're successful at that, is we add another layer of challenge. And oftentimes what I ask them to do is to close their eyes and there can't be any talking and we're gonna do the same thing. So that's interesting, right? Because we're so dependent on using our eyes to look around to see what we're doing or to use communication. But this is where these kids are dropping into their body more fully and into that embodied presence, that sense that we can communicate um, in other ways and really still have an awareness of others um, even when we can't see or speak about it. And again, the kids are usually pretty surprised how successful they are at doing that. Um, so in terms of a creative project that kids might do, and a lot of the adults like to do this too, it's a nice little lesson for them, is something that we call the mind jar. And so I have a mind jar here that I'd like to show you and uh, just tell you about. Um, so this jar, as you can probably see, is filled with a clear liquid. And um, we know that there is a clear liquid in here because we can see through the clear glass. Um, even if I held it up to my face, I can kind of see through the glass and the liquid, not only into the jar, but through to the other side. And this clear liquid is really representative of the natural state of our mind, right? Um, however, uh, we may not recognize that. And why don't we recognize it? Well, if you look closely at the bottom of the jar is um, some glitter that has settled there. And that glitter represents our thoughts, our emotions, the different stressors that might um, be happening, distractions and so forth. And when those things get stirred up, you can see that while it looks really kind of beautiful, right? Because our human mind is a beautiful thing. It is also clouding our mind. It's uh, not allowing us to really see things clearly, right? That's that lens that kind of um, covers up and uh, is what we're checking in with for that inner weather report. But once we develop this awareness that, oh my gosh, I, I see that I'm really upset about something or I see that I'm really consumed about what happened earlier, we have the capacity now to pause, maybe you know connect with our breathing, uh, maybe connect with the sense of our feet on the floor right now or sounds that are in the environment 
And just notice that in this short time that I'm telling you this and practicing it, that what we see is those thoughts, those emotions, they started to settle, right? And now we can see more clearly what's going on. Now, this doesn't mean that it's going to maybe last a whole big, long time, amount of time. However, it might stir up. We notice it again. We pause. We reconnect. And we do that time and time again. And the more we practice that, the more that we can become aware of not only our inner experience, but our outer experience, and be able to see things clearly so that we can respond more skillfully to the circumstances of our life. So I just kind of want to leave you with um, the sense that whenever you might be finding yourself overwhelmed by the pandemic or things that might be happening in the news or on social media or just, you know, in your personal life, that you have the tools to just pause for a moment, reconnect with your body, feel your senses, notice your state of mind, notice your mood, take a couple of breaths, and everything will be okay. So thank you for joining me and be well.